Hi friends, and thanks for tuning in. Today we're looking at Elastic Beanstalk, the newer-ish version of this, at least as of the time of this recording. We'll see how easy it is to deploy a web application using the sample app that's available with Elastic Beanstalk. So let's get started. Here on the dashboard, the big orange button says to create an application. So let's try that. But you'll see you actually go to this page to configure an environment not necessarily the application. If you come over here on the left and come into Applications and create a new application, you'll see that the options are quite a bit different. So let's talk about some concepts first, and then we'll come back. So we have the application, which you usually think of as your code, but in Elastic Beanstalk, this is just a logical collection of stuff that will eventually create a running application. You can kind of think of it as a folder. It's a way to organize things. Inside of the application, you have an environment. So this is going to be your infrastructure, like your EC2 instances, your load balancers, and so on. An environment will run a single application version at a time. And an application can have multiple environments, like one for dev and one for test. We've also got application versions that sit inside of this sort of folder for application. This will be your application code, which is stored in S3. An application can have many application versions, making it easy to do rollback and so on if you need to. And then we've also got saved configurations. This defines how an environment and its resources should behave. You can use this to launch a new environment and an application can have many saved configurations. So I'll leave that with you just really for a reference slide, but let's go back to the console where we left off. So here I actually am going to create a new application, kind of a folder for what we're doing. And I'll just call it my first app. You can add a description and tags as well, but let's just create this, keep it simple. And then over here on the left, you'll see that we're in this folder or this logical grouping. And then those three things that we talked about. So environment, which I don't have yet. We've got the application versions and the saved configurations. So let's go ahead and create our environment now. For environment tier, we've got two options. If this is going to be a web server environment, like a website or an API or something like that, then you want to go with web server environment. Or a worker environment is more for long running processes or things that you need to perform on a schedule. We'll go with the web server environment. The application information, this is filled in for me because I started by creating the application, calling it my first app. So we're good there. Moving down to environment name, this will get filled in automatically based on the application name. You could update it if you wanted to, though. For domain, I'm going to just leave that blank for an auto-generated value. We'll skip the description here as well. And then moving down to platform, we're going to go with the managed platform here, meaning Elastic Beanstalk is going to maintain everything for us. Choosing the platform, let's go with Python here. You'll see there's lots of other options as well, though. And then for platform branch and version, we'll just go with the defaults that it gives us. And then we move down to the actual code. If you have some existing code, you can upload it here, grabbing a local file, or you can also upload it to S3 initially, and then just point Elastic Beanstalk to that S3 URL. You can give it a version label, or if there's existing versions that are already uploaded, you can just point it to that. Lucky for us, though, since we don't have either one of those, we can just go with a sample application, and this will just let us see how things work. And in the end, we will have a working application that we can go look at. Moving down to presets, here you can specify a little bit more about the infrastructure that's going to be running this application. The presets, single instance, free tier eligible, that's what we're going to be going with. There's some other options here as well, using spot instances, something for high availability, or a custom configuration. But we're just going to go simple and free, and then say next. This section here for service access has to do with the different IAM roles that will give Elastic Beanstalk the right level of permissions to set up and manage our environment. I do have an existing service role because I've used Elastic Beanstalk before. If you don't have one, though, you can just create a new one, basically go with the defaults here, 
and then go next. But I will say use my existing one for key pair, even though Elastic Beanstalk is setting up and managing the environment, it is possible to log into your EC2 instance once it's up and running. If you want to do that, make sure that you choose a key pair here. I'm going to skip that though. We'll just go with the defaults and then we'll say next. Some additional settings here where you want this to live your virtual private cloud or VPC. I just have one, which is my default VPC. That's probably true for you as well. So just select that. We can then choose the subnets where we want the instances to run. I'll just go with two of the different subnets here, US West 2 C and 2 A. If you plan on running a database, you can configure the subnets for that as well. I'm not gonna deal with the database here in this demo. And in fact, I've got it disabled here. If you wanted to enable the database though, you would just toggle that over and choose your subnets above. Lots of other settings here around the database. We're just gonna skip through those. We'll skip the tags and say next. So you can have a lot of control here or you can just keep it simple and go with a lot of the defaults. Some additional information about how your EC2 instances are configured. This is your storage. So the root volume, the hard drive basically, but you can choose SSD, or magnetic. We'll go with the defaults again. CloudWatch monitoring, we'll go with defaults. Defaults, defaults, security groups. I have some that I've created for other demos. I'm gonna go with the default on this one, which you should have as well. That will let us actually get to our website in the end. Capacity, here are things around your auto scaling group which Elastic Beanstalk will set up and manage for you. So we'll go with the defaults on this. Scrolling down, next. For health monitoring, we're just gonna go with the basic system here. Scrolling down, manage platform updates. I will deactivate this since we're just doing a simple demo here, but you can have Elastic Beanstalk manage your updates on a weekly basis or something like that. Email notifications, if you wanted to sign up to be notified of important events, we'll skip that as well. Defaults, defaults, all the way down. And then next. Then to the review screen, all of the different things that we've set up here. And then finally, we can say submit. So Elastic Beanstalk is launching our environment. This will take a few minutes. You get sort of play-by-play -play action down here of what's going on under events. If we refresh this, we'll see what's happening here. So starting to create the environment, using an S3 storage bucket for environment data, creating a security group, and so on. So I'll just let that run for a few minutes, pause the video, and I'll be back when we have something to look at. And success. Excellent. If we scroll down to events, You'll see successfully launched environment. Perfect. And if we come over here to the domain, let's click on that. Congratulations. Here's our first Python application built using Elastic Beanstalk. So this is just the sample application. This is not our actual code, but it was super easy to get this going. All of the infrastructure and everything underneath the application was stood up and is being managed for us. So pretty easy. Back to Elastic Beanstalk. Here on the left, we can take a look at what exactly is in here. So coming into configuration, here are all of the things that are happening behind the scenes, all of the infrastructure, updates, monitoring, logging, and so on. Also, if we open up a new tab, we can go into EC2, and we can actually see the instance there that Elastic Beanstalk created for us. So I've got one running instance for my first app. We could log into this if we selected a key pair earlier. We should also have an auto scaling group. So scrolling down here, auto scaling group, and you'll see the EB there in the name for Elastic Beanstalk. So that was also created for us. Back to Elastic Beanstalk, we have additional things like monitoring. Here we're monitoring for things like CPU utilization, network in, network out, the health of the environment, and so on. 
and you can change the time range up here. Since I just started mine, these are all going to be the same, but you can change your range, time zone, and so on. If you click on health over here on the left, you get additional information about what's going on with the environment, all from right here in Elastic Beanstalk. Now, if you were following along, let me show you how to delete the application. Elastic Beanstalk itself is free, but the underlying infrastructure is not. So let's make sure we go decommission that. Come up to your applications. Select my first app. And then for actions, say delete application. This will also terminate the environment, which is exactly what we want. So we just need to enter the name of the application. I'll copy paste that and delete. This will take a little while to run, but you'll get notified up here when it's done. The infrastructure, meaning your EC2 instance, your auto scaling group and all of that should be blown away as well. And then you should be good to go. So that's it. That's how to deploy a web application using Elastic Beanstalk. If you found this helpful, hit that like button for me and also consider subscribing for more content like this. Thank you so much for watching.